Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. Um, today we're looking at something that I think you'll find pretty fascinating, especially given you know your interest in sustainable agriculture. Yeah, absolutely. It has to do with how we might be able to use something we usually think of as waste to actually grow food more sustainably. That's right. We're talking about black soldier fly larvae and more specifically, their waste, which is called frass. Frass. Yeah. Yeah. It's got some really interesting potential as a replacement for peat in agriculture and horticulture. Okay, so a couple of things there. First of all, I love that we're talking about insect poop today. Always a winner. But seriously, though, before we even get to the frass itself, can you back up a little and tell us why replacing peat is so important in the first place? It seems like one of those things that most people probably wouldn't think twice about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely peatlands, where we get peat from, are actually really important ecosystems. They're like giant sponges that soak up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. They're really important for regulating the climate. Mm. But the problem is we're extracting the peat for things like gardening and agriculture way faster than it can regenerate. And that's releasing harmful greenhouse gases and it's damaging these ecosystems. So not doing our planet any favors. Gotcha. So how do black soldier fly larva fit into all of this? I know they're really good at breaking down waste, but I'm kind of drawing a blank on how their poop is the solution here. Yeah. So black soldier fly larvae are incredible little recyclers. They can take all sorts of organic waste, even stuff that we would normally just throw away, and they convert it into valuable resources. So we can use that as protein for animal feed and as we're finding out nutrient-rich frass. So they're like turning trash into treasure yeah. twice. Exactly. And that's what's so cool about this. The research we're looking at today actually dives into just how effective this treasure can be for growing something that everybody loves. Tomatoes. All right, tomato yeah. time. So what did they actually do in this research? What did they find? So they did a really insightful study where they didn't just compare frass to peat directly. They actually included a third thing, vermicompost, which is basically just a fancy word for worm castings. Worm castings. Another really popular option for improving your soil. I love it. Head to head to head competition. Who comes out on top, frass versus vermicompost versus the old standby peat? Well, I don't want to spoil the surprise just yet, but let's just say that the results are really, really promising, especially if you're concerned about the environmental impact of your food. Okay. You've definitely piqued my curiosity. Let's dive into those findings. Okay. So let's get into those findings. How did the frass actually perform against the peat and the vermicompost? Yeah. Did it actually help those tomatoes thrive? Yeah. So this is where things get really interesting. The researchers looked at a few different things, like how much did the tomato plants grow? How many tomatoes did they actually produce? And just the overall health of the plants. What they found was that in most of the categories, they looked at black soldier fly frass did just as well as peat. Wow, really? That's so interesting. I have to say I was expecting at least some kind of difference, like maybe the tomatoes would be smaller or something, but it sounds like they were basically indistinguishable from the peat-grown tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, and that's huge because it means that this byproduct which very often is just thrown away, yeah. could actually be a really viable alternative to peat. And obviously with a much lower environmental cost. Okay. Yeah. That's incredibly promising from that sustainability standpoint, for sure. But what about the vermicompost? How did that stack up? So vermicompost also did really well. It definitely proved itself to be a great option for soil health and tomato production. And it actually did slightly outperform both the peat and the frass, but only in one very specific area, you the are. size of the tomatoes. Interesting. So we've got the frass neck and neck with the peat in pretty much every category. Yeah. And then the vermicompost comes in with these slightly larger tomatoes. Does the research say anything about why the vermicompost might have had that edge? Yeah. So this is the really cool part. They actually took a closer look and they found that the vermicompost had higher levels of calcium compared to either of the other mixtures. And calcium, as you probably know, is super important for plant growth, especially when you're talking about fruit development. Oh, OK. So it's like the vermicompost was giving the tomatoes a little calcium boost, which yeah. of course led to bigger tomatoes. That makes a lot of sense. But if calcium is really the key here, could you potentially just, you know, add that to the frass and then get even better results? You're already thinking like a scientist. Yeah. And that is a really great question. That's actually one of the really exciting things about this research. It opens up so many avenues for further research. Yeah, boosting the frass with calcium. That's a really cool idea. It sounds like this whole area of research just opens up a lot of possibilities for sustainable agriculture. Absolutely. It really does. Like, think about this. We could actually be on the verge of like a major shift in how we actually grow our food, moving away from these practices that are really environmentally damaging, like peat extraction mm -hmm. 
and moving towards these more sustainable options. And you know, it's not even just about finding something that works. It sounds like the FRAS could actually be a much more economically viable option as well. Oh yeah, definitely. FRAS right now is just a byproduct. It's something that insect farms often actually have to pay to dispose of. So yeah. if they can actually turn that around and sell it as a valuable product, to gardeners and farmers, it's a win-win for everybody involved. Yeah, a win for the planet, a win for the farmers, a win for anyone who loves a good tomato. What's not to love? Exactly. And it's perfect for you because you're so interested in this idea of sustainable agriculture and reducing waste. It's all about finding these innovative solutions that are better for people and better for the planet. This has been a fascinating deep dive. I really feel like I've learned a lot. And honestly, I'm starting to see some real potential for using something like insect frass to create a more sustainable food system. Yeah, and that's what I think is so exciting about research like this. It really challenges us to rethink these assumptions that we have. Like, what is waste? Really, what can we do with things that we normally would just throw away? It opens up all these possibilities for more sustainable future. Who knows? Maybe soon we'll all be, you know, sprinkling a little bit of insect magic on our gardens. Now that's an image I can get behind. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this deep dive. It's definitely given all of us a lot to think about. And to all of our listeners out there, we would love to hear from you. What other innovative solutions are out there that could help us to create a more sustainable future for food production? Let us know. 